Hi friends, this is uh, Sunil Chandy and this is Food for Thought again and this is a ministry out of Christ's Episcopal Church. I am the priest and rector here at Christ Church and we are at a different place again, uh, not just in my office, not just in the church, but we are in the church, church sanctuary, but you've never actually had been in this situation. Uh, we're right now uh, at, in the choir loft. Uh, this is uh, on our balcony in the church, uh, church sanctuary uh, and uh, we're here with uh, our choir master, uh, George Kent, and we're going to talk a little bit today about uh, this great piece of, uh, uh, this wonderful instrument, uh, our organ, and with George, who, has, who knows a great deal about the history of it. George, thank you for being with us today. Oh, it's a great pleasure, thank you. I know that this, uh, this organ was a, a labor of love for you because you helped put, uh, institute it or bring it into play, into existence here at Christ Church. Well, yes. Uh, when I came to Christ Church as organist, uh, which was back in 1956, I believe, uh, this gallery was not here and the organ was not here. The, the organ then was up where the present chapel is and your sacristy. Yeah. The organ was housed in a separate room almost and only had openings there and uh, where the uh, Annan stained glass is now, that was the openings. Uh, and it was, um, well, it had an interesting history. The organ originally, was down Elm Street in a house. It was in a house? Yes. Where the current St. Pius Church is, Right. there was a house owned by a rather wealthy person who had this organ installed midway between two floors. And it was a, a, a German Velte organ, a theater organ. It played from rolls. Similarly, the way a piano plays from rolls, you know, with the pedals and so forth. Yeah. Um, and it was, the, the reason it got to Christ Church was that one of the uh, senior wardens here, uh, Andrew Fisher at that time, uh, decided to give it as a memorial to his widow, uh, his, uh, I'm sorry, his first wife. Uh, and... Um, just up and did it. And it was not a church instrument by any means. Um, it had nothing above a four foot pitch on it, and I'll explain that later. Um, and it was cantankerous and it was old. Wow. Um, and it was, it was very difficult to get anything done. It, it really would not even accompany hymns too well. Oh, really? So, uh, James Hannon was then the rector, and uh, we talked about the possibilities of doing something different, uh, which was, at that time, rather, uh, you know, controversial, because again, we didn't want to put the or a new organ back where this other one was, and uh, and we had a fair amount of people on, on, in vestry, et cetera, that thought, well, no, the organ's fine. You know, we don't need anything. Uh, <laughs> I know. Finally, uh, one of the prisoners, Harold Brown, um, who was the father of uh, the priest, uh, who's uh, f uh, forgotten his first name now, but uh, Harold uh, had a little bit of an inkering, and he... he uh, went in one day to see what was behind the wall, and he came out and stated, this is a cider press. <laughs> cider press, what does that mean? You know what you press apples with? To make yeah. Cider. Oh, it's a cider press. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, at any rate, uh, after a fashion, uh, we decided that we had to do something different. And of course, the, the problem was, where should the organ go? It obviously wouldn't make any sense to put it in a separate room where it's not to be heard. The obvious answer was either on the front wall yeah. or on the rear wall. Well, the front wall wouldn't make much sense to the prisoners, although 
There are several churches where that is done, but uh, that was a, quite a bit controversial. Uh, ultimately, we decided that it should go back here and that we should build a gallery over the narthex, which is what we did. Now, my problem in those days was that uh, I had to go to the widow of Andrew Fisher and almost ask permission to not use the memorial that he had set up. And, I, you know, I was young and wet behind the ears. Well, so that's one p point. How old were you at this time? Oh, I must have been in my early 20s, I think. You did, so did you, you just graduated from URI or? No, I had uh, graduated from, well, yeah. I, no, I had, when I first came, uh, was 1956. By the time we got around to doing the organ, I'm talking about 1962. 62, 63, okay. 63, somewhere so, so, in there. Okay. So um, I uh, got up enough courage so, to, so to let go me ask you. and see the widow. So Jim and she was absolutely fine with it. She was, No yeah. problem. That's no, beautiful. Whatever, if it needs to be done, it should be done. Uh, so we were off and running, and uh, we had a, a great deal of very positive work from the vestry and people to go out and raise money to get this project done. Well, the first thing was to build a gallery. We built a gallery and the gallery was here for two years before the organ went in. The organ went in in 1965. 65? Yeah. And, and this is again while Jim Annan was here? Yes. Yeah. Jim Annan became rector here in 1962, isn't it, or something? No, he came. <laughs> no, he came. He came. He, he came back as rector shortly after I came here as full-time so organist and choir master. So and, uh, the vestry had not told him that he had a full-time organist and choir master. And he said to then the senior warden, J. Albert Pawson, you know, uh, who was the uh, owner of the Bradford Dye Works, Peace Dye Works, um, and uh, a British fellow, and he said to him, you know, you didn't tell me anything about I have a full-time organist and choir master. And Pawson's response was, well, Father Rannon, you have to have faith. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, that's the first time anybody ever told me to have, have faith. Have faith. <laughs> you know, and at any rate, but, but it, everything was positive and we did get the gallery in. The next step was, what type of organ should we have? Yeah. Um, I, uh, so up to this time, you, the major decision was to not have the organ situated in the place that it was before, but no. to have it a new, a new Here. space created. Right. And, and now the next decision is what type of organ. Exactly right, yeah. Okay. And with that in mind, uh, basically the pipe organ is a wind instrument. I mean, originally it was hand pumped. Even those huge organs in Europe, there were treadle system for men to to put to step in and pump on these things. I've seen those yeah, organs. Yeah, and quite often, if they had uh, on a Saturday night some bad actors in the town, they would house them up in the church the next morning to pump the organ. <laughs> Uh, no, that, that's documented. Is it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Can we still do that? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, you know, we talked about it, actually, uh, because, uh, you know, if you lose electricity, there's yeah. no way to run the, the, uh, the, yeah. uh, the organ. blower, the organ blower. Um, and uh, I, can t I can tell you that uh, I, at one point, was playing concerts in Sweden, and... Uh, Two minutes before the concert in this one church, the power went out. Oh my God! Well, the Swedes have enormous supply of candles, and you know they they they're, they're wonderful. The church lights up, you know, and they took care of all of that. And the organ had been built with a hand pump, just in case. So one of the trombone players in the brass group that I was playing with pumped the organ for the organ pieces. Oh, wow! Uh, and we got through the concert. Uh -huh. You know, so so it happened in spite of the power problem. Um, at any rate, it wasn't practical ultimately to do that here. Yeah. Um, but the issue 
here was to make whatever instrument go here not get in too much of the way of the stained glass because in many ways this is some of the most interesting stained glass in the church. Yes. Um, and uh, it was done by Joseph Reynolds, uh, a Boston artist. Um, we uh, debated very carefully about how to do this and, and uh, to save the uh, glass. But that's, in fact, the why the organ is in the shape that you see it. Yes. Because we tried to fan it so that the rose window came through still from down below. Yes. And the two lancets are visible. Um, that was the project. That's beautiful. I think. Now, uh, to get back to organs. Yeah. After the advent of electricity. Yeah. Then organs were controlled by blowers that were run by electricity. Um, and stop action was done by electricity. This is what we call a mechanical action organ or a tracker organ, uh, which means that every note on the organ is played by, a, by means of a lever going all the way back to open the organ chest. If you listen to this, Now I'm going to just depress that key slowly and you're going to hear that valve open slowly. Again. Yeah. So uh. that you have ultimate control of the music. Or can't do that with electric action. Electric uh -huh. action is either on or off. It's like a doorbell. Okay, so either you make so one it, sound or yeah, the other. You, you, but there's no way to control the articulation of, of So the, then like even with the control of that, you get to uh, adjust the, the sound that comes out. Yeah, this is all taking place with here. That's why I say it's a wind instrument. Wind instrument, as okay. As opposed to a keyboard instrument. Ah, yeah. okay. So you have a different amount of control. So then, uh, so, um, so then you have the. Uh, so which brands, in terms of, because I, when I was at St Andrews Mount Holly, we had a Skinner organ. Yes, and, that would have been electric. And yeah. that's an electric or, yeah. organ. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it and did seem to have pipes, but I think it was ornamental. Oh no 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 no! no? You, 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 it's a pipe organ. It's a pipe organ. But as to how the air gets to the pipe, is ah, the question. You know. Okay. Okay. That's okay. that's the difference. Now, um, we knew that one of the most important builders in the 20th century was an American, Charles Fisk. Um, and so we were very interested to see whether he would consider building an organ for us. Uh, we also uh, got, got a specification for a possibility from the uh, Schlicker Organ Company of Buffalo, New York. Schlicker. They were mostly uh, electric action, uh, but I had a colleague who was a close friend who was the sales manager, and he wanted a chance to bid, which he did. Yeah. Um, and we also uh, had a set of specifications from the Rieger Organ Company of Schwarzach, Austria. They were very interested and uh, and would have built a very incredible, complete organ in terms of the reed pipes, which I'll speak about later, um, but not saving the windows. Not saving the windows. Charles Fisk was able to come up with this design. Now, he was a very interesting guy. Yes, I've heard about uh, his, his because, history. Uh, he was originally trained as a nuclear physicist and, in fact, worked on the first A-bomb. Yeah. He was part of the Manhattan Project. Um, but he went out to Stanford University in California for an advanced degree in nuclear. And he was having real questions in his own mind about whether he wanted to be cooped up messing with physics and bombs, etc., the rest of his life. And he ran into... Uh, one of the more important 20th century musicologists, Putnam Aldrich, 
and they became quite good friends. And uh, in the friendship, uh, Charles was having all of his issues with whether he was going to stay in nuclear physics. And, and Putnam told him, you know, Charlie, with your knowledge of sound and your musicianship, because he was very musical, uh, you should think about building pipe organs. Mm. And that's how that all started. He apprenticed with a local builder in California and then came back east. He was raised in Rockport out on Cape Ann in Massachusetts uh, near Gloucester and uh, set up shop and the CB Fisk Organ Company was formed. Um, How long ago was that? It must have well, been that was in the 50s, late it, 50s? No, it was in the 60s, actually. In the 60s, uh, okay. And uh, by the time he got to us, we signed the contract in 1963, I believe. So it was a two-year waiting period. Uh, before us, he had built the Mount Calvary organ in Baltimore. Okay. Uh, which uh, a group of us went to to see, to just see how it worked in the church, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and ultimately, um, he, he was the, the builder, and we... Uh, put the organ in. So then um, he was experienced in, uh, he, by that time in 1963. He, he's, he's done several different organs already and completed several different projects. Yes, this is Opus 45, I think. Yeah. Okay, this is his 45th. Yes. 45th. Right. Uh, yeah. uh, okay, right. great. He's built quite a number of smaller organs. Um, in fact, this was the first three manual, I believe. Uh, I think that's correct. Um, but and it then, took him two years. To, it took them two years to. Oh, at least, yeah. No, because everything is handmade. Yeah. You know. Um, was it handmade in the U.S. or was it in? Uh, well, the pipes were the pipes for the most part came from Europe. From Europe. Today, the Fisk organ makes their own pipes. Everything. So the the shop has expanded. He's passed on, unfortunately, but. Uh, he was a, a powerhouse yeah. uh, in the organ world. I, I remember hearing stories how, uh, how you would take him to Ogonst. Oh, yes. He came to choir camp. Choir. And <laughs> we had a ghost walk one time where we needed some smoke for the ghost to come through. And so we worked this out with powder. And he made a track, a mechanical action device that went about 20 feet away from where the powder was so that I could set it off from over here <laughs> by, a, yeah, by, by a thing that would flip and light the match. Yeah, he was extremely skilled. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, very special guy. And humble, the, the fact oh, that yeah. he could, yeah. yeah. No, very, very wonderful guy. Yeah. And after the organ went in, we, had, we established the organ series. And uh, over the years, uh, the over the next 20 years, I think... I, I can safely say that every um, important uh, European concert organist played here. Yeah. Yeah. We had we had the finest here, and including Anton Heiler, who was in in Vienna. And <laughs> I'll tell you a funny story. He, Anton Heiler, had been hired by a, a, a firm in a church in Providence to dedicate their new organ which was electric. And he was bent on finding out how this instrument worked. He made the organist drive him here the afternoon of the concert there. And he played the organ and he stood up here and he yelled down, this is what you should have done. <laughs> <laughs> not, not very nice, but, uh. but at any rate, you know, the, uh, the mechanical action thing is very important because it is ultimate control. Yeah. You know, otherwise you're just ringing doorbells. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I uh, for the seven years I've been here and, I, and I've come to the concerts where we've had guest organists come in, I always sense that they really appreciated playing on this instrument. Oh, yeah. It's, it, it's very special. Yeah. And people have come. We ju I just had... Uh, a young organist who just graduated from Oberlin Conservatory come here three weeks ago to have a go. And uh, 
So I get calls off quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, now, what is the organ? Okay. You see three keyboards plus a pedal keyboard. Each Can one of these keyboards... I'm going to move over there. Each one of these keyboards is a separate organ unto itself. Mm -hmm. So you have, in degrees of uh, loudness, you have the great organ, which is this keyboard, and that's, that's the most pungent, if you will, uh, of, of all of them. And then you have the swell organ. It's called swell because I can control the, the sound by these shutters. That's ah. all. The swell is all enclosed in there. Ah. And that's, that's what, so that, if, for example, I have. Wow. So that's controlled that way. And, and you're using your foot uh, on, also. On the, on the swell shades. On the pedal. swell yeah, shades. Right. Whereas the great, in contrast, or the rook positive, which is everything out here, play the same thing. They have three different levels of sound, plus you have the pedals. Now the fundamental pitch of the pipe, which means when I play this note, it would sound the same pitch as a piano, uh, means that that pipe needs to be eight feet in length. And if I play a different stop that's only four feet length in pipe, it's going to sound an octave higher. Ah. Likewise, if I play two foot length, right? And I can even do that at the one foot pitch. Wow. And 16 feet are uh, the big ones here, uh, the pedals, so that they... Uh... And at eight. And at four. Now, there are different families of pipes. The fundamental sound that tells you that this is a pipe organ, it's not an accordion or whatever. You know, when you hear it, you say, oh, that's, all, that's an organ, is what we call the principal sound. Uh, and that's this row right in front here the, of the, the spotted metal, mm. um, which is a combination of zinc and tin. But. Yeah. By contrast, we have the flutes. And for example, let's just take a look at all three different kinds of flutes. The one on the great swell, it's a different color. This is even yet a different color. Yeah. So that you can uh, make a good variety. And that, that again, depends on the ability of the organ tuner or the organ builder to voice the pipes. And that, that's a specialized art. And that was one, one thing that Charlie Fisk was uh, without peers, you know, he, he really was way ahead of the game. Now, was the mechanical organ uh, something of a, uh, of a new concept? Or no, was that, no, no, this no, is no, that ancient. Goes, uh, it's a, ancient, ancient, yeah. it goes back to, uh, this, this particular organ is referred to as a classical organ because of the mechanical action. That's a kind of a misuse of the word because the organ was classical in the Baroque era, which was from 1600 to 1750. Uh, and that's, that was the heyday of this kind of organ being built. Again, once electricity came in, things changed 
and you got what we call more romantic organs uh, that were meant to imitate the sounds of an orchestra. Mm. You know, and that, that and that's what Skinner was doing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. So that that's. Uh, so then, I mean, so the the thing I, I'm looking at this, and <laughs> you know, it, I, I've got to apologize, George, because every time I, I'm, you know, when I do a service, I just say play the hymn. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but I mean, uh, even just now looking at what you're, there's, it's complex. It's uh, yeah. It's, you have to make decisions about what you're going to do. For example, on hymns. Yeah. You know, I may I may start one verse. the way I might change it too and finally end up with you know. and all these so you little build, you build a hymn and again it depends on depends on the text of the hymn also right you know and what what the message is of the verse and and there's all these little decisions that all these decisions yeah. that have to be made right in order to 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 get the right tone the right yeah you know, your, you know, I may feel one way about a hymn. Somebody else may feel entirely different. Yeah. And do it differently. You know, so that's. And then also, there's uh, there's adjustments based on when you're, because it's a mechanical action, because of the how uh, how hard you press. Yeah. The how, articulations. Um, yeah. yeah the, right. Yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah. I will be very much more careful when I say, just play a hymn, Sam. <laughs> George, <laughs> just, oh, just play anything. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, anyway. let, me, let me ask you another question. Yeah. This one over here, these. These, these trumpets. These are, these are the, I talked about families. I mentioned the principles yeah. as being the fundamental sound of an organ. And then I mentioned flutes. You also have strings. Now, on this instrument, because it's a classic organ, it only has one string, uh, which is the flute celeste. Um, if I play just the flute. Now, if I add the string. Yeah. And you get a sort of a quieter, more, which I use during communion, for example, quite a bit. Um, and it, it's more, uh, it's more head, headed towards a romance, a romantic organ, if you will. Uh, but the reason a flute celeste sounds the way it does is that it's not tuned quite the same as the other one. Here, listen to the flute. Now let me play the flute celeste. Mm. Just a little a bit, bit sharp. Yeah. Now, when you put them together, then you get this. Hear it? Yeah. There, it beats. Just... Yeah, without. Now, these reeds, this is the trumpet, the longest ones. <laughs> Then we have a second row at four foot pitch, an octave higher. And together. Wow. And you have reeds in the pedal. Or up an octave. Or down an octave at 16 foot pitch. quite out of tune right now. The reason for that is it's summertime. It's summertime. And we're and we're we have uneven heat here. Yeah. Yeah. So. And and we're also going to be having this uh, the uh, the instrument tuned, right? Uh, I think in January, I think or Well, it's going to be worked on this some it's, it's well, it went in in 1965. Yeah. It's time to replace some of the leathers that that contain the air so the air can't leak. And uh 
the leather that you use for a pipe organ, guess which kind is the best leather to use for a pipe organ? I would think the only leather I know of is, is cowhide, I guess, no? Kangaroo hide. Kangaroo. <laughs> Kangaroo hide is the best for an organ. Oh, why is that? It, is it, it just, um, it's more pliable and it, it has a tendency to last longer. Wow. So the Australians so, got to be careful. So we've got some material from down under. Yeah, then. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we've got to replace some of those things. And yes, uh, hopefully in the first week of January, we'll get this put back in, uh, in workable. I mean, it's, it's fine right now, but if, if I really want to be fussy, no, it, it needs work. Yeah. You know, so we'll get to it. Yeah. And that's about it. We also have one other kind of stop on the organ, which is called a mixture. That's when you play more than one pipe at a time. For example, now. That, that's the same note, but it's sounding. Did you hear it break back and pick up a low note as I went up? And that, that's what gives you the real pizzazz. And the mixtures are either two or three ranks together at the same time or four or five ranks together at the same time. They're all different. This is the mixture on the swell. See, that picks up in the middle, it picks up something quite low, which gives it a different flair. Or the mix mixture on here. But it's more than one pipe at a time. So we have mixtures and mutations, which are, are pipes that start at other than the octave. For example, do you, now, do you make these decisions for the mixtures uh, while yeah. you're playing? Or, oh, yeah, absolutely. Or, or in advance. I, I hear you practicing. I love hearing you practice down below. So, but uh, do you make it, is it, uh, is it something uh, depending on, or, or do you depending know in advance? The, depending on the music. So depending on the music, yeah, okay. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So, but a mutation, uh, for example, we have what's called a sesqui altera. That means it's got the twelfth and the seventeenth playing at the same time. So if I take, excuse me, I don't want that. What is it doing? Oh, and one of the problems. Now, now, if I go up twelve notes. And if I go up 12 notes plus the 17th, I can do that. That's, that's called a mutation. And that, that's a whole nother ball game. So it's, it's, it's complex. It's beautiful. Yeah. Well, I mean, just the, it's, so the shades of sound that comes out. Yeah, a lot of different things. Yeah. Well, that's about it. Not George, sure. I, I, uh, um, we should come up here more often, I, 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 just to hear it. I mean, uh, I it's think... It's a little warm up here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully with the air conditioning, that'll, be, well, that'll change we'll it too. Well, see how that goes too. Well, George, thank you for, uh, for spending some time with us. Uh, and for, for you folks, uh, this is one of the, the great uh, attractions of being here at Christ Episcopal Church. It's our music, uh, our music that has uh, inspired and uh, helped people uh, through the very difficult and challenging times of their life and the jo joyful times. Uh, and all of the music, and I know, uh, because I know, I know George's character, always gives honor to God and glorifies God and, and, and helps people to connect to God through music. And, and George, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for your ministry among us and I'm grateful that you're instrumental in bringing this, this great uh, Fisk organ into Christ Church 
and uh, being able to touch the lives of so many people. Yeah, it was, it was a big project, but it was very well worthwhile. Right. So. And I'm sure, I know that uh, the things seem to work really well and connect really well, but I also understand, I know whenever we're making a change like this, there's always, it's controversial, and it often involves a great deal of devotion and faith yeah, and yeah. prayer and, uh, and of calming of, of, conversa uh, of people uh, who might be anxious. Well, we had a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of people got on the bandwagon and, and made a go of it, so. Yeah. It was very good. It's beautiful. Right. Folks, thank you again for joining us. And uh, it's our time to end right now. And so what we do is we end with this prayer. This is a prayer that uh, we have started uh, since the beginning of the COVID crisis. The Lord be with you. Let I'll us pray. You. Let us pray. Jesus Christ, you traveled to towns and villages, curing every disease and illness. At your command, the sick were made well. Come to our aid now in the midst of the global spread of the coronavirus. Heal those who are sick with the virus. May they regain their strength and health through quality medical care. Heal us from our fear, which prevents nations from working together and neighbors from helping one another. Be present with those in authority who are making hard decisions. Support the medical professionals, emergency responders, counselors, and our caregivers. We ask this all in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Join with me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who Amen. art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, go in peace to love and serve God. Spread the light of Christ to the world around you, the light of hope, joy, music. The world needs it right now. Thanks for watching. Did you know that you can join Christ Church from anywhere in the world? If you're feeling connected to what we're doing, email us today at communicate at Christchurchwesterly.org.